We thank you, Father God, because there's no name greater than the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, Lord, because you are the author and the finisher of our faith, Father God. We thank you, Father God, Lord, because you've begun a work and you're not done, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your salvation, Father God. Lord, and as we get ready to go into service, Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place. Have your way in this place, Holy Spirit. This is your house. Have your way. Father God, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you, Father God. And we don't want to go by the agenda, but we want to move aside, Father God, and allow you to have your way. Have your way upon these, your people, Father God. Bless them, Father God, Lord, in abundance, Father God. And we thank you because we believe that we shall not leave the same way we came in. That we shall, be, that we shall leave blessed, changed, transformed, set free, Father God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you and we thank you. And in Jesus' most mighty and holy name we pray. Amen. If you love him, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. And we're getting ready to blow the shofar. After we blow the shofar, you're now in the hands of the praise team. Amen. God bless you.
the redeemed of the Lord say so tonight. What does it mean to be saved? Is it more than just a prayer? Just a What does it mean to be to be formed in his life? So then we have a purpose. Come on, to be salt and light. Salt and light.
about that name tonight. In the name of Jesus. That name of Jesus. this prayer with me say dear God all that you have for me this night I surrender to your will bless me touch me heal me whatever it is that you want to do in my life I give you full reign over this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on.
on and give the Lord another praise offering. We could have the house lights, amen. You're already standing. Would you find three people that you don't know? Welcome them to the house of God. Come on, smiles are required. Come on, get out of your seat. Find some folks you don't know. God bless you as you're finding your way back to your seats this evening. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Do we have any first-time guests with us this evening? First-time guests, if you can wave, wave at us. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It's great to have you here. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Please make sure that you visit us at our welcome desk. We would like to grab some information from you, and we have a gift for you. So welcome to the house of God. Just have a few announcements here. We're going to go on with service. So the young adults are going to be having a night at the ballpark this Saturday, August the 25th. And there are four tickets left. Those tickets cost $20. Um, and tonight is the last night to RSVP. So you've got four tickets. you got four tickets. Um, where's Brother Josh and Sister Rena? God bless you. They have tickets. Please make sure that you see them for the young adults. Women in the Mirror will be meeting Saturday, August 24th at 10 a.m. Sister Lori will be um, bless, blessing that group with a, uh, with a message. So come on out. Don't miss it. There's going to be dinner with the pastors Friday, August the 31st. At 6.30 p.m., it's a great way to meet and greet the pastors. If you are a new member or considering being a member of Word Alive Ministries, please come on out. Um, SOS Women's Ministry, on September the 28th from 6.30 to 9 p.m., there's going to be a snack and paint. The cost will be $25 per person, and the payment is due by the 16th of September, so don't miss it. Amen. And last but not least, men, where are the men at? Amen. This is very, very important. And this is a special appeal on behalf of Pastor. So Friday, August the 24th at 7 p.m. this Friday. Please come on out, men. Um, Pastor has a special appeal for you to come out and spend some time so we can talk about the direction of the men's ministry. Please don't miss it. The, the, you can put the, put the game on TiVo. You can put it on DVR. You're not going to miss a thing. Amen? Because it's better to come to the house of the Lord. So, so we're encouraging you to come out, men, and don't miss it. Amen? Amen. So the dinner with the pastors is RSVP. So you have to sign up at the welcome desk. So that way we know how much food to bring. Amen? Amen. Who's ready to worship the Lord with your giving? All right. Praise the Lord. Brother Jesse's going to come up and, and give us a, a short prayer in scripture. We're going to go on. Praise the Lord. Um, Psalms 126, it says, those that 
sow in tears shall reap with joy. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. You know, if you just stop right there, we're looking at, at the law of sowing and reaping. That's the law of sowing and reaping right here. It's a promise to you that if you plant, you will reap. Deuteronomy 20, it says, And all these blessings shall come on thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. He says, You will be blessed in the city. You will be blessed in the field. The fruit of your body will be blessed. The fruit of the ground will be blessed. Your basket will be blessed. Your storehouse will be blessed. Mm. Blessed will you be when you come in and blessed will be when you go out. Let's stand. Father, we just come before you in the mighty name, in the powerful name of Jesus to thank you, to praise you, Father God, that you give us so much so we can give, Father. We're like you, Father. We're givers. We're givers, Father. Because you're the biggest giver. Amen and amen. Amen. Someone bring your offering forward. Children and nursery and youth are dismissed. Children, nursery and youth are dismissed. Once in a while on a Wednesday night, we have a little extra blessing. And so uh, tonight, before we get into the word, we, you know, our guests will come up here in a little bit. We have a special song that uh, Sister Donna is going to do. So would you give Sister Donna a big God bless you as she comes on up to bless you with this song. I was looking on uh, Facebook, and I'm sorry I was, and well, not just looking to be looking, but I was listening to a minister. Just happened to pass this little thing. I don't know if anybody's heard about Arkansas or what's going on with that thing that they're supposed to unveil, that demonic mess, because the Ten Commandments is up. Better really pray. So I'm about ready for Jesus to return. I don't know about you. But that is the most horrific thing I have ever seen in my life. So I'm all about Jesus coming back really soon. i
and give the Lord another praise offering. That's the conclusion of our service. No, I'm just kidding. Amen. How many of you are ready for the Lord to come? Amen. There's still a lot of work to do. Amen. So make sure you're about God's business. Amen. Well, without further ado, would you put your hands together for our speaker tonight, Sister Lori Fisher. Amen. Praise God. Good evening, body of Christ. Amen. His beloved. Amen. Praise God. I want to give honor to my pastors, who my husband and I just absolutely love. Thank you for the gift that you are to us and to the body of Christ. We appreciate you. Amen. Of course, to my wonderful husband, my sweetheart, Glenn, I love you, I honor you, and I respect you. Amen. 
Amen. How many are ready for the word tonight? Amen. Uh, Sister Amanda, can you go ahead and start that video? The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. who would go out and do stories on true, not stories, they would actually interview people at a real Here are life event, five they things would change the names to protect the innocent. that you didn't Amen. know and, uh, about one of my favorite comedic actors. Our word, amen, the word of God, we see it as fictitious stories. We see the people in there as Bible characters, amen. Many times we don't see it as relevant, Many times we don't see it as relatable. The word relevant means that you don't think it applies to your life. And the word relatable means that you can't identify with God. And honestly, this book from Genesis to Revelations is absolutely relevant to each and every one of us here tonight. Amen? And it's relatable. Amen? How many are going through a difficult situation right now? How many, when you get through it, before you can say, praise the Lord, the next one comes around the corner and hits just as hard? Anyone can relate to that? Amen. Recently, very recently, I was having a woe is me kind of day. How many of you remember Eeyore? <laughs> Little pessimistic donkey from uh, Winnie the Pooh. Well, I was walking around the house one day. Well, God, do you really love me? Do you really know what I'm going through? How many have had those kind of days? <laughs> well, you know what? I'm so glad I asked him because he answered me. Amen. So I pray tonight that this word that will minister not only to your heart, but that you would be set free. Amen? So this is how I would like to start this off. Ladies and gentlemen, the account that we are about to read is true. The names have not been changed because they are not fictional story characters, but real-life human beings like you and me. What they have gone through is not a scene in a play, but it is a real-life event that took place a long time ago what they experienced is real what they have felt is real but most of all what God has done for them is real are you ready for the word tonight I'm going to ask you to stand in honor and reverence of God's presence tonight as we pray Heavenly Father we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord our Savior we thank you for the precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here tonight. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would move in this house tonight. That the spirit of revelation that gives illumination and brings transformation to our lives would be just so real tonight in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the anointing that is upon your word. The anointing that is upon your word to lift burdens, to break yoke, to demolish strongholds tonight. And Father, we just welcome you in this place. And we thank you and we praise you that you have come here tonight, Father, to speak to us. And Father, we say we are here to listen, to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise that is due your name. And everyone that agrees says, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Turn in your Bibles to John chapter 11. Praise God. Amen. And we're going to talk about Lazarus. Amen. 
How many know that was a bad place to be? Amen. It was a death. Well, if God did for him, amen, what he did for him, he will do for you. Whether it's a financial situation that you're going through, a bankruptcy, a foreclosure in your home, whether it's health issues, whether it's relational issues, whether it's a, um, a lawsuit, whether it's a custody battle, whatever it is you are going through and anything in between, because to me, death seems to be the worst situation. Amen? So we're, this is going to be an interactive teaching. Amen? So I'm going to ask you to do some declarations tonight. Tonight, Amen? We're going to start in verse 1. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. I want to bring out three things in this verse. The first thing that I want to tell you tonight is that Jesus knows your name. He knows your name. And Brother Randy, let me tell you, there may be a Randy here and a Randy there, but you're not Randy number one and you're not Randy number two. Both of you are sons of the Most High God. Yeah. Victoria, your mama may call you Chica, but God knows you as his beloved. Brother James, your friends may call you Bubba, but you know what? God knows you. He knows your name. You're his son. Amen? Amen. The second thing is Jesus knows your address. Whether you live in a magnificent house, whether you live in an apartment, whether you live in a trailer, whether you live in a shelter, whether you live under a bridge in a cardboard box, you may not have an address, but let me tell you, you may be homeless, but let me tell you, God can locate you. He knows where you're at. He knows where you're at. Amen? So you don't have to have an address per se as we do who live in homes. God is able to locate, locate you. He knows your address. The third thing is he knows exactly what you're facing right now. He knows every detail. Every detail of what you're going through. Those things that you've not spoken to anyone about that you've carried in your heart. Those things that burden you down. He knows the details. He knows what you're going through. Amen? And this is our declaration we're going to make. So I want you to uh, repeat after me. God knows my name. God knows my address. And God knows what I am going through. Amen. Verse 3. So the sisters sent word to him saying, Lord, Behold, he whom you love is sick. So Lazarus' sisters called upon the Lord. Now note in this scripture that Lazarus was not dead. What was he? Sick. Amen. God wants you to know that he hears you when you cry out to him. He hears you when you cry out to him. Whether it be a faint cry, whether it be a weeping or a groaning, God hears your cry. Amen. He hears your cry. Amen. And he wants you to know that he cares about you. He really loves and cares about you. Amen. And he knows more about your situation that you, than you do. Amen. You think you know about your situation, but he knows even more about it than you do. Amen. Amen. So let's make this declaration. God hears me when I pray. And God cares about me. Verse number four. But when Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness is not to end in death, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. My God. God knows all, and he hears all. Amen? He declared that Lazarus' sickness was not going to end in death. What a powerful statement. He declared that it was not going to end in death. Amen? So know that God has heard your prayers. He has seen every tear that you have shed. And I want men to know as well, you may not cry physical tears, but God knows the cry of your heart. He knows the cry of your heart. Amen? He knows all about it. And I want you to know that 
no matter how bad it looks right now, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to kill you, amen? And guess what? God's going to get the glory out of it. God is going to get the glory out of the situation that you're going through. God is going to get all of the glory out of everything that you are going through. Amen? So let's declare, I will live and not die. And I will declare the works of the Lord. Verse number five. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Jesus wants you to know that his love extends so much further than just you. It extends to your entire family. Whether or not you have relationship with your family, God loves them. He loves them. Amen? So we're going to declare this. I release my loved ones to God because he loves them too. Verse number six. So when he heard that he was sick, he then stayed two days longer in the place where he was. You must know that even though you think that Jesus should move when you want him to move. Oh, we've all been there. It's not based on your desperation. And it's not even based on your need. There is a timing for everything. And that timing is God's timing. Amen? So trust him. His timing is always right. Always right. Amen? So declare with me, God's timing is right. And I trust his timing. Verse number seven. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. So Jesus did not go to Lazarus immediately, but he went about the father's business. The flesh, your flesh, and Satan will drive you, put pressure on you. That's how you know when you're being led by the spirit or if you're being led by the flesh or if Satan's behind it. Amen? If you're feeling pressure and you're anxious and you're worried, that's either your flesh or it's Satan. But how many know when it's the spirit leading you that he will give you perfect peace? I don't care how bad your situation is. And we all have bad situations that we've been in. But when you're following the leading of the Holy Spirit, you will have peace on the inside of you. And it's that peace that passes your own understanding that will guard you and it will keep you. The perfect peace of God. Amen? That's how good our God is. Amen? So one thing that we do is we take our eyes off of God in that circumstance. Perfect peace have those whose eyes are fixed on him. Perfect peace. You want perfect peace in your situation? Fix your eyes on Jesus. He will keep you in that perfect peace. Do not isolate yourself or pull back. Amen? Instead, press into God. Press into God. Do not isolate yourself when you're going through a difficult situation. Don't isolate yourself. That's, that's, a, that's a, a scheme of the enemy to isolate you. Do not pull back. Press into God. Press into God. Press into God. Press into God. You have brothers and sisters who will stand with you. Amen. There's not a one of you who have not been through something. We've all been through something. No one will judge you. We will stand with you. Amen? So stay in the will of the Father and go wherever he tells you to go and do whatever he tells you to do. Amen? Declare this. I press into God. And I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. 
Verse number eight. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you and you're going there again? My God. So the disciples were followers of Christ. Would you agree? Well, they subtly tried to tell him what to do. Mm -mm -mm. They feared because the Jews had tried to previously stone Jesus. And now he was going back there again. So when in fear, you will try to tell God how to do it, when to do it. That's fear. That's how fear operates. Amen? God has not given you a spirit of fear. Amen? But of love, power, and a sound mind. So lean into him and trust him every step of the way. Amen? Every step of the way. Now declare with me, I will not fear. I will follow and trust God. Verse 9 and 10. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Jesus will always answer. He will always answer, but it may not be what you want to hear. But he will always answer. Amen? And he will give you what you need right at that time. At the right time, he'll give you exactly what you need. He knew that there was safety in God. And safety because he was walking the light of the Father's will. So how many know God had him covered? God had him covered. And God will keep you safe when you walk in the light of the Father's will. Amen. Don't allow the situation to distract you from hearing the voice of God and where he is leading you. Because many times when we're going through things, we want to pull back. And it's kind of like God can't use us. That's the lie from the pit of hell. God wants to use you even the more during those times. Amen. Somebody out there needs from you. The very thing that God has placed on the inside of you. So continue in the light of the Father's will. Amen. Declare this. I walk in the light of God's will. And God covers me. Verse 11. This he said. And after that he said to them. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But I go now so that I may awaken him out of sleep. Jesus already knew that Lazarus was going to die. But he also knew that he would live. You may feel as if you're not going to make it through. You may feel like this thing's going to kill you. Right? But stand strong. God knows the outcome. He knows the outcome. Amen? Amen? So stand strong, stand strong, amen? He will strengthen you through it, amen? Declare, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 16, therefore Thomas, who is called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go so that we may die with him. Mm-hmm. How many know that if we surround ourselves by the wrong people, uh -huh, they will agree. They will agree with you. Amen? And we all know. We all know. So surround yourself with the people who are going to lift you, encourage you, build you up. Amen? Praise God. Don't allow the doubters to come speaking in your ear. Amen. Amen. Don't let them speak words of death upon you. And don't come into agreement with it as Thomas did. Amen. Renounce it. Amen. Renounce it. Amen. The doctor's report may say it's incurable. 
But with God, there's not one thing that is not incurable. Not one thing that's incurable. That impossible thing that you're facing, oh, what a glorious place to be. You know why? Because that's a perfect opportunity for you to trust that the God, oh, the God will work in that impossible situation. Amen? When everyone else has failed and everything else has failed, he will not fail you. Amen? That impossible situation is just perfect for him. He's the God of the impossible if you believe. Amen? So declare, I renounce all doubt and unbelief and I will stay in faith. Do you believe it? Amen. Verse 17. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb for four days. Whew. Remember, Lazarus was only sick. Yeah, but how many know that it got worse yes, it did. before it got better? Whew. It got worse, amen? And it seems that things are getting worse. How many know that your miracle is just right around the corner if you stand fast? And if you continue to believe, amen? God's not bound by time and circumstances. God is not bound by that, amen? God is never late as we think he is late. He is always on time. Always on time. Declare, my God is never late. But he is always on time. Verse 21. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. Whew. Martha was looking to the natural circumstance. And she was not looking at what the Lord had previously said. The Lord had prophetically spoken and said what? That he will live and not die, that this sickness will not end in death, but God was going to get the glory out of it. What are the promises of God that he has given to you? Yeah. There's a lot of things that God promised, and I'm here to tell you that he is not a promise breaker. He is a promise keeper. He is a promise keeper, amen? God's perspective is not of this earthly realm. You have to go beyond into the realm of the spirit. Above and beyond the flesh and press into him. Even if it's just quieting yourself before him and allowing him to speak to you. He's faithful. Trust him. Trust him in his word, his promises. Amen. Declare with me. God said it in his word. And that settles it. Verse 23, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Jesus was not moved by their emotions, by their feelings, but he had the heart of the father in the matter. Whew. We got to get the heart of God in the situations, in the matter. He knows. He knows. Amen. And how many know that Jesus called those things that are not as though they are? Whew. He called those things that are not as though they are. Are you calling those things that are not as though they are? Amen. Continue calling those things that are not as though they are according to the word of God, which is his will for you. Amen? Amen. Thank you, God. The same spirit. Whew. Get this, people of God. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of you. Now, I don't know about you. But dwells means that he lives there. He stays there. He has not abandoned you in your situation. He dwells on the inside of you. 
Don't allow the enemy to lie to you to say that he's left you and he's forsaken you because of the situation that you're in. He dwells on the inside of you. And if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal body. It will quicken you in that situation. It will quicken you. He lives on the inside of you. He lives on the inside of you. These are your brothers and sisters. These are your the saints of God who have gone on ahead of us. They are not Bible characters. They are real people. They went through some things. They felt some things. But did Jesus leave them? No, he will not leave you either. Amen. Declare. I speak the word of God. And it shall come to pass. Verse 33 and 34. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? Jesus was moved with indignation because of the sorrow that the sickness and death had brought. Jesus' heart is moved with compassion. He is moved with compassion for you despite what it looks like. He is moving on your behalf. He is moving on your behalf because he cares for you. He loves you. He's for you. He's not against you. He is moving on your behalf. Amen? He's moving on your behalf. So repeat after me. God is a good God. And he's moving on my behalf. Verse 35, Jesus wept. Whew. Jesus shed tears for Lazarus. He's known to us as the invisible God. And just because we can't see him, know, know that he is crying and shedding tears. And not only that, he shed more than tears. He shed his blood. He shed his blood. His body was wounded. He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. And the chastisement of your peace was upon him. And it's by his stripes that you are healed. He did that for you because of his compassion and his love for you. Receive it in Jesus' name. Whew, Jesus, declare this. Jesus intercedes for me according to the will of God. Oh, that's so powerful. He ain't just saying words. He's praying according to the will of the Father for your life. Whew. I don't know about you, but that blesses my socks. Oh. Hallelujah. He intercedes for me according to the will of the Father. How could it go wrong when he's play, praying according to the will of the Father? It can't go wrong. It can't go wrong. Amen? Verse 37. But some of them said, God, but some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He wants you to feel sorry for yourself and blame God. And he wants you to accuse him of not caring for you and loving you because if he did, he wouldn't have allowed this to happen. Well, I'm here to tell you, Satan is a liar and he's the father of lies. He is not your father. So don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. He's not your father. Yes, in this world we are going to have trouble. But how many knows that God is your deliverer? And he's made a way out of escape for you. Amen? 
Declare, God is my deliverer. And he's either going to bring me out of this or he's going to bring me through this. Praise be to God. I'm going to move quickly. Verse 38. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it. Jesus was making intercession with groanings which could not be uttered. Jesus is able to sympathize and he understands your weakness and the temptations. And he knows exactly how it feels to be human. It seemed like it was the end for Lazarus because he was already dead for four days. But no matter what the circumstance, it's not the end. It's not over until God says it's over. Amen. Declare with me, it's not the end. It's not, the end. It's not over. Until God says it's over. Verse 39. Jesus said, remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench. For he has been dead how many days? Four days. Yes, your situation stinketh by now. Right? But God is not moved by time in the natural. He's moved by God. He only does what he sees the Father do, and he only hears what he hears the Father say. Amen? So let's talk about this fourth day. Biblically speaking, on the fourth day, it's called creation week. God completed the material universe. On this day, he brought into existence our son, the moon and all the stars, Genesis 1, 14 through 19. Their purpose was not only to give off light, but also to divide the day from the night on the earth, thus becoming a basic demarcation of time. They were also made to be a type of signal that would mark off the days, the years, and the seasons. Woo! The world has this saying. That all good things must come to an end. Hmm. Is that what the world says? Hmm. Well, I'm here to tell you that God's mercy, God's grace, God's love, God's healing power, God's provision, God's joy, hallelujah, and his miracles, they never come to an end. Never come to an end. Never come to an end. I'm here to tell you that the situation that you're in, it's temporary. Amen. It is not permanent. It is not permanent. Amen? Your dark time, season of darkness, whoo, it's coming to an end. It's coming to an end, people. Hallelujah. It is your time and your season for a miracle. In your eyes, the situation may look impossible. Whew, my God, it's not bigger than God. Your circumstance is not bigger than God. It's not bigger than the God that you serve, amen? God is right in the center of your impossible situation, right there with you. He is there with you. Do you believe it? Look to him only. And receive your deliverance. And receive your miracle. Declare with me. I am in my fourth day. 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 And I take my miracle. Glory be to God. Verse 40. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Jesus told Martha, if you believe, you will see God's glory. Amen. If is a conditional word. It's a conditional word. If she didn't believe, then she would not see God's glory. Jesus says to you that if you have full confidence, 
full confidence in him that you have to be fully persuaded that God is able to do just what he said he would do. Amen? Then you shall see it come to pass if you believe. Amen? So declare with me, because I believe, I will see the glory of God. And we are almost done. Verse 43 and 44. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. And Jesus said to him, Unbind him and let him go. Woo! How many know that Martha was seeing her harvest because she chose to believe God? Woo! Let me ask you, do you believe God? Do you believe God? You're going to see your harvest if you believe God. You're going to see your harvest, amen? And the very thing that tried to kill you and the very thing that tried to get you to lose your mind in the name of Jesus, I command it now to let you go. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. 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 Declare. I am not bound up by my circumstance. I am loosed. I am free. And I receive my miracle. Verse 45. Therefore, many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what he had done believed in him. It's very vital that you stand firm in your faith. God is going to get all the glory out of your current circumstance. And many will see and know that he is the true and living God that brought you through. You're going to have a testimony that is going to bring glory to God if you continue to stand fast and allow him to bring you through it. He's going to get the glory out of it. And others will see and know that he is the true and living God. You have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. Amen? You've overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Declare, I have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. And I want to end tonight by saying this. It started with a woe is me kind of day. But I am so gl glad that God answered me. He answered me with his word. These are not just stories, people. These are real life events. Amen. And you're going through a real life event. Amen. And if God did for them what he did, there's nothing too hard for him. So this is the scripture <laughs> that I started out with. John 11, 3, 4 in the Passion Translation. Lori's declaration. So Glenn's wife, Lori, prayed unto Jesus. Lord, my husband, Glenn, the one that you love, he's very sick. Please, Lord, please come. And when Jesus heard that Glenn was sick, he said unto Lori, this sickness will not end in death for Glenn, but it will bring glory and praise to God. This will reveal the greatness of the Son of God by what takes place. So I'm here to tell you, yes, I know and I understand what it's like to have a woe is me kind of day. But I know what it's like to trust and serve the true and living God. I know that, that I know that I know and I am fully persuaded that what God has said in his word is true. 
I know that I know that I know, sweetheart. I know that I know that I know that this is temporary. It is not permanent. God's going to get the glory out of this, sweetheart. Amen. God's going to get the glory out of this. Amen. Stand to your feet tonight. Stand to your feet tonight. Oh, just lift your hands in the presence of God. Oh, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father, that we are your beloved. Thank you that you know everyone by name. You know the numbers of hairs that are on their head. And you know what they're going through. Oh, thank you, God, that you said that you would never leave us and never forsake us. Father, we thank you that our hearts are encouraged tonight by you. Thank you that we receive, Father, from you the very miracle that you have purposed for us in our situation. And all we can say is thank you. Amen. Come on. Give God praise tonight. Thank you, Sister Lori. Would you bow your heads for just a moment? Sister Lavinia, would you, would you get your altar team up here just in case there's anyone that's going to need prayer? We're going to dismiss you in just a moment. And our prayer is that the Word of God goes with you and that it prospers in your life that it does something just keep your eyes closed you know sometimes the message just impact somebody in such a, a powerful way this isn't this isn't out of line it just means that somebody has just been ministered to by the word of God and it's and it's come alive to them you know the scripture that I was um looking at is verse 25 John chapter 11 because Mary didn't understand Mary and Martha didn't understand what Jesus was saying they didn't get it when he was telling them that he was going to live they thought he was talking about the resurrection of the dead when the Lord comes and raptures his people. And this is what Jesus told, told them. He said, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Yes, he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Let me let me just say this with for you. Just just one moment. Close your eyes. The Lord spoke to me as I was sitting there and, and Sister Lori was ministering the word. The Lord said, tell my people that even though their circumstance or their situation seems like it is over, like, like there is no hope for your circumstance, like it's done, it's finished, you've been overcome, you've been conquered, you've been devoured, you've been stricken, you've been destroyed. The Lord says, even though the situation seems like there's no hope, that's when God steps in and does the miraculous. Come on. In other words, it's not over until it's over, and then even then, God can resurrect it from the dead. Come on. I don't know who I'm speaking to that's watching 
by live stream. But the Lord is saying, some of you think your marriage is done. And God says, I'm about to restore that relationship. Some of you think, you know what, I've reached my point, I can't go any further. God says, I'm about to shift and and change that. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray, we're going to dismiss you. But if that is speaking to you, if you're saying, you know what, I had almost lost hope. I had almost thrown in the towel and walked away saying that it was done and it was over. But now I have hope once again. And I want to believe for my breakthrough. I want to believe for my miracle. I want to believe for my marriage, my home. I want to believe God to resurrect and heal my situation. I don't care what it is. Some of you might have given up on being healed. Some of you might have given up on that financial break. Whatever it is, we want to agree with you. That's all we want to do is agree with you and pray that God would shift the circumstance and do the miraculous like he did here in this scripture. So in just a moment, we're going we're gonna to pray and you can come up to the altar. Stretch your hands towards heaven. Lord, as we get ready to dismiss. Father, you know those that are at the end of their rope. They're needing that breakthrough. They're needing renewed strength. They're needing, Father God, a fresh touch. They're needing a new hope. Lord, we pray right now, Father God, that Lord is this word permeates their being, Lord God, that they will walk out of this place different than they come, Lord, with a new thought in how you are going to bless them, Father, knowing that it's not over. Even though it stinks, even though, Lord, it seems like it's beyond, you are the resurrection in the life. So thank you for this word, Lord God. Bless your people, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. God bless you. We love you. If you want prayer, if you want prayer, you can come on up. We're asking if you are a a man, you go to a gentleman that's at the altar. If you are a lady, that you go to one of the ladies that are up here. And this altar is open for you if you want prayer. God bless you.